All right, we're back. And this week, uh, we're going to talk a little bit of roof venting and attic venting right after this. Yes. <laughs> Here I come to save the day. The Mighty House crew is on the job. This is Mighty House. All right, we're back. Today, we're going to talk about attic venting, roof venting, that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. uh, next week, so you want to listen to that also, that'll be on soffit venting. But first... Make sure you click on that subscribe button down in here somewhere. Click that Crush bell it. so that that way you'll be notified next time we post a new video. And uh, also leave a message down there because Rich loves getting those emails and stuff and, and, uh, and answering emails and, and answering those questions below. So make sure you do yes. that. So and use, my, uh, and use my anonymous name is Ron at MightyHouse.net. <laughs> That's my other email address. That's, oh, that's your email. Okay, got that's it. Pen name. Ah, yeah. that's my pen name. Yes, yeah. yes, yes. It's not Rich at MightyHouse.net. Are you sure? No, it's definitely Ron at my. And it takes one less keystroke. Ah, yeah. There you go. <laughs> yes. Excellent. All right. So let's get going. How do we calculate? I mean, there's a lot of vents in this particular roof. How do okay, we know? Well, how do we know so how many we need? Well, I, first, I think on that roof, you count how many chickens you're housing. Because <laughs> that looks like the roof of a chicken coop. Yeah, it does. But, okay, so we actually love to do more current. We like to do unvented roof structures. Okay. So in new construction, we don't vent it. We keep the attic and the uh, whole house as part of the thermal envelope and right. the pressure envelope. Yeah. So, but that's great for new construction. It's damn near impossible to retrofit a house to do that. Um, so now when you're getting a house re-roofed, uh, maybe some new siding, new windows, it's important to understand roof venting and how it affects your heating and cooling bills and the overall performance of your home. Correct. And we get a ton of questions about this. Yes. And we didn't realize that it's been a long time <laughs> since we did this on the radio yeah. as a tip of the week and kind of thought that we had already done this. So bear with us here on this little extended intro. But no, roof venting is an extremely important thing. So let's jump into it. Right. So, Okay. So first up, what's the first step? First step is determining whether or not you have a vapor barrier between your ceiling and your attic space. Okay. Now, by current code, they can say your vapor barrier could be primer. All right. But what they don't take into account are all the holes in your ceilings. All the can lights, the boxes, the ceiling ceiling fans. Exactly. Yeah. Now, <laughs> now if your house is, you say, 10 years old, you might have cans that say ATIC on them which is airtight insulation contact rated, right. which means you don't have to build boxes around them. The can is airtight. It should be sealed with the, the trim ring, should have a little gasket on it. So that is part of it. Now, if you have an older home, and I happen to be in one of those that has old school can lights, which look like little chimneys going right yep. in your attic. Yep. So now, because I have so much indoor air going up into that i need to have venting for one one square foot of venting for one every 150 square feet okay if you have a good solid ceiling maybe you don't have a lot of can lights maybe you've got you know when the light fixture comes and it has that insulation thing in it right and you have that installed there you go that's what it's for it stops air movement so what you're doing is now you only need one square foot of venting for every 300 square feet of attic Got it. So let's just take a something kind of simple, a okay. 1500 square foot house. Sure. With a good sealed ceiling with a vapor barrier. So I only need one vent, one square foot of venting for every 300 square feet. Okay. So I only need five square feet of venting. Uh, now, total. Total. Okay. So we split that half between roof and half between soffit. Okay. So I need 2.5 feet for my roof vent. Okay. That's about as simple as it gets. Yes. That's, that's breaking it down. Yeah. So on a 1,500 square foot ranch with a vapor barrier, which could be paint, could be a number of things to keep the ceiling from allowing too much air to go up, one square foot for every 300, I need two and a half square feet in my attic and two and a half square feet in my soffit. Got it. Now. This is where it gets dicey. 
all those vents behind you. Uh huh. Like these, yeah. Each one of those. So the venting, actually, every time you have a particular roof vent, each style has what they call net free area. Right. NFA. It will have a number associated with it. And that's usually stamped so, on there on on the on the fixture when you're when you go to put it yes. up, most likely. All right. So now let's start going with the next photo. First up, first up. Ding. So these ding right there. Look at that. No, 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 no. Wait. No, right there, right there. No, that's why I had to go. So I said we needed to have five square feet. Yeah. But two and a half on the roof, two and a half in the soffit. Right. But most people interpret that as five roof vents. <laughs> I moved over because how many do you see there? One, two, three, four. There's probably one right in here, too. Five. Yeah. So there's five. Yeah. Now, is that enough venting? Well, here's the thing. A mushroom vent in that style is typically right around 51 square inches okay. of venting. It'll, Like you said, it'll be stamped right on it. Right. 51 square inches. Well, what's the square foot? 144 square inches. Uh-huh. Yeah, right. Yeah. <laughs> so to make one square foot, I need almost three of those. Okay. So this is where it gets a little weird. So now to get two and a half square feet, I need to get six, seven, seven and a half of those at least. Right. Now they have five there. It means I'm too short on that roof. Yes. We're not even talking I, about soffits till next week. Right. But that, and that's assuming this is 1,500 square feet, that this roof is a 1,500 square foot house. That is correct. Right. That is correct. So now you start to see that the math is very important in these and you have to do it right. So it, if you're going to have five of those on your roof, there's no problem having seven. You just right. put them closer together. Right. But it's what you need to vent that roof properly so that your shingles don't curl. Because actually I can see where some of those shingles actually look like they're curling. Uh -huh. And you know what that's from is baking from the inside out and they will tend to curl. So you shorten the life of your roof. You, in, you have more heat trapped in your house. So, next one is the next step everybody well, likes I've, is I've got ridge a question vent. Just on the math, why okay. is it square instead of cube? It's a three dimensional space. So why is it square? Because your attic is generally calculated like yeah. that. That's what you're saying. Yeah, you're because yeah. So he's talking about cubic feet of attic, but yeah. we're not actually. I, I would imagine that somebody back in the day did the math, and that's why they said based on the floor. So. Let's back up. If you live in a 6,000 square foot two story, you're not using 6,000 square feet. You're only using the roof area or attic area, which would be probably half, 3,000, 3, or maybe even less. Right. So, so it's not square footage of living area. It is just square foot of ceiling in your roof. Attic space. But you could have a very steeply pitched roof, mm -hmm. at, or you could have a shallow roof. So, right. But so that, that your cubic foot of air in that space is going to change based on the pitch of your roof. Exactly, because we talked about insulation in in another mm -hmm. episode, sure. and that is based off of cubic, I believe, right? Well, the insulation. Yeah, well, when you, yeah. yeah, the yeah. thickness of it. Okay. Right. But yeah. like, you know, like for a typical attic, though, if you had, whether it was a 1,500 square foot house, a ranch, or a two-story that was 3,000 square feet where the second floor is 1,500 square feet, and regardless of the pitch of the roof, yes, you have more cubic air to move. But what we're trying to do is figure out how many cubic feet uh, or how much area of venting you need so that you can get a convection current going from your soffits up through the roof. Okay. And that's really all we're working towards, a convection current, not air changes per hour, which is more important on cubic feet. Right. Um, that's Trust me, this is why when you have a few drinks with two building science guys, it goes south really <laughs> fast. <laughs> Because it's like we get a little excited and you're going, yeah, pass the salt. You know right. what I mean? Like, I'm done. You know what I mean? But it is. It's actually kind of exciting because it does have a huge effect on how your house heats, cools, and maintenance. Right. So. And whether or not you have a moldy, nasty attic or if it's nice, clean, and dry. Gotcha. Yes. Okay. Ridge so, vents, I think, is where you're at. Yes. Yes. So it's second, probably the most common thing that's used currently, particularly in the north, is a cobra vent or a ridge vent like this. So this one, and I'm not, I should never say cobra vent because that's actually a brand, uh, yeah. but a ridge vent that is a open foam or a, or a cellular type plastic that you roll out and it's on an angle. 
Um, and the idea is that the air from your attic goes into the bottom of that and is allowed to dissipate left and right underneath the ridge cap. Right. So this is going to get shingles put over top of it, which you'll probably right. see in a different picture. But this will have uh, shingles over top of it. So that's just showing you the venting right, right through here. Right. So here's the deal. And this is where we, again, go back to the math. So those simple roof mushroom vents were 51 square inches of venting. Mm -hmm. But these particular rolled vents that you've got there are only 14.1 square inches per foot. Oh, yeah. So that's even less. So now to equal one mushroom vent, you need four feet of that. Mm -hmm. And not so much down here. We don't do a lot of 1212s, things like that. But up in the Chicago area, in the Midwest, you know, and I don't know about the rest of the country, but 1212s are real popular. Well, you don't put the ridge vent on the hips, right? Right. So you might only have 12 or 15 or 20 feet of ridge. Right. It's not enough venting. Right. Your attic is going to retain heat in the summer, and it's not going to get rid of moisture in the winter. Right. Mold, rot, uncomfortable. It's not good. <laughs> so right. Exactly. That's at 14.1 square inches per foot. Okay. So now you got to do the math again, right? If I needed two and a half feet, so that's going to be 144 times two, you know, 288 plus another half, let's just call it 44. So now we're like, let's just call it 322. We're good. Right. 322 square inches. So divide that by 14.1. Right, I'm gone here. I'm not going to try it. <laughs> we're just going to say it's, math on the air. It's, it's a lot. lot of feet. It's like 35 feet or something, right? Sure. I'm going to be off, but I'm just telling you. Leave it in the comments. Simple yes. math. Yeah, leave it in the comments below. <laughs> Yeah, just go with it. All right. <laughs> so that's that plastic style and a lot of those you just got to look at the NFA. Right. So what's the next one we got here? This is another ridge vent. It's another one. And, and this, is the, this is the plastic one. So now there's the ridge cap that goes over top of it. But you can see it sticks out a little bit. And it's, got, it's vented through that area too. Right. And that's why it's so popular because uh, from either side of your roof, you really don't see vent or from either side of your house, you do not see roof vents. Correct. Because, you know, ooh, they're ugly. Right. But they work. Sorry, they serve a purpose, yep. you know, just yep. like oysters. They're ugly, <laughs> but they serve a purpose. <laughs> yeah. So, so go ahead. No, but I say so that plastic ridge vent, that's like 18 square inches per foot. Right. And it's oh, underneath it's here, is a, there's a, the plywood or your sh roof sheathing is cut. So there's a gap between there. And I think we'll see that in one of these next pictures. So you'll see that the whole so. process works. Yeah, right, hopefully they've got it Without that over. gap? It doesn't work too good. Ah, there you go. No, it doesn't work well. See, yes. Look, look right back here. You can see where that's all cut open and the rafters are exposed. So now that's where that air is coming out. And what, what type right. is this one? That's just an aluminum standing vent. Now... I never saw those when I worked in Chicago. Yeah. And, but we, it's almost all we use on shingle roofs down here in Florida. Okay. And I'll be honest, it's what I have on my house right now. Yeah. And I actually, on my house, I'll go back. I'll, let me give you a number on that 21 square inches per foot. Okay. So per foot, for every two feet, I can equal a mushroom vent. Yeah. So now we're getting more doable here. It, that's that. That's a technical term, doable. Doable. Yeah. So anyway, that vent, when I first had my house re-roofed, after we purchased the home, it needed a new roof, and we knew that going into it, and we sure. had to get it hurricaneized. Okay. Which is, you know, extra water barriers, nailing patterns, and so on. Well, the guys did me a favor, and they put on a plastic ridge vent. <laughs> I could not get my attic below 131 degrees. Wow. So I called them and I says, get this ridge vent off, cut the roof back and install that. Right. My attic, even on a hundred degree day, does not get over 119. That's amazing. So it's, it's staying. Within it's a 20 or 30 degree difference when you change that venting. And then for us, which is again, not going to, you know, it's stupid, but my air handler and my ductwork are in my attic. Uh -huh. So when the air conditioning kicks on, it's like, a blast from your furnace sure <laughs> oh then we have air conditioning yeah so the logic isn't there right that's yep. why we you know we'll have a series on my new house because that's okay. why we're getting up out of this one right <laughs> but this um 
so if it's keeping the outside temperature, the inside is, is equal or close to the outside ambient temperature. Now That's you don't correct. have to have issues with uh, worrying about moisture, mildew buildup, or, or anything correct. like that. So it's all going to stay the same. The ideal scenario is that the air in your attic is the same temperature as outside, and that would be a perfect right. scenario. Absolutely. And it works. So that's actually, to me, the, the best one. So it shows using mushroom vents is probably the best way to go in most areas. Yep. Because um, as I said, I've never used that up north. I don't know how it does with snow. And I'm assuming there may be an issue with snow, which I've, is why you don't see it up there. I've got the first one, the first ridge vent. I've got that on my house. And in a nice blow, blowing, driving snow, we'll have a little bit, a strip of snow down right through the middle of our, our attic. And in a hard okay. driving rains, we have little moisture down through there too. See, so. and we get monsoons here, and I've yet to have any water because it wouldn't go in my attic. It would definitely be in my ceiling. Right, and <laughs> but this, but the way this is designed, it has it has a, a cap, and then that ridge, that venting part, got a way, baffle in it, right? Way underneath it, so that rain never right. makes it there. And whereas yeah. with the cobra stuff or the uh, the the fiber ones, that venting is right on the very edge, right where your shingles are. So it can blow right. right in there. Yeah. So again, this should give you a little idea of some of your choices for roof venting. Yep. Um, again, if you have a, just real simple recap, if you have a non vapor barrier ceiling, you know, lots of holes in it, you need one square foot for every 150 square feet of attic space. Uh, if it's a good sealed ceiling system uh, with vapor barrier, then we wanna go one square foot for every 300. So these are your roof venting options. And next week, we're going to talk about your soffit venting issues. Right. And then we got one other option. They don't work. They don't work with one without the other. Correct. Correct. And then we've got one more option for your attic. If you really got an old house, you may have some gable vents. And then you're going to need a... Do you want to pause for a second? Maybe he can just reverse that and put that what I just said at the end. <laughs> I forgot you did that. Yeah. That's okay. I got it. He'll, he'll clean it up. He won't, but he, okay. he, 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 he <laughs> right. just, he's just no, going to tell us. vents are good. Yeah, yeah. You so, got to watch it anyway. Right, right. How are we going <laughs> to? I watch them. That's why, especially if they're 10 or 11 minutes. Right. So your gable vents, you need a couple of these on, and these are just old school ways of doing it. Uh, prior to the mushroom vent, prior to our ridge vent that we we're talking about, older homes could just have a gable vent. And you'd have one on each end, and then that would get a natural draft going through the house. So, uh, but you, whatever size you have on one side, you need the same size on the other side. That way right. it doesn't But those are still drawn. They still, that would only work if you had wind. So that's why you still have sop vents for convection currents. You want, you know, warm air rising. And it comes up and goes out them vents. So Out them vents right there. Or you could have vents. one of these, which is a doghouse. Yeah. That's a doghouse yeah. vent right there. So, and those have been around for I don't know somewhere around five six hundred years. Yeah, <laughs> and they you work know, very so, well. So it's funny when people don't want to do proper venting, and it's like, yeah, we don't need that. They only no. figured that out six hundred years ago. Yeah, go look at any old barn. Any, they're mm. all on the barns. That they're all there for that same very purpose. Well, that's what they put the weather vane on, right? Where the cupolas yep. and the couplers were nothing more than fancy roof vents. Yep. Yep, it's exactly what they were for. Okay, so next week again, we're going to talk about... Soffit venting so that your roof breathes properly. Right. So you're not blowing into a bottle, maybe? Is that... Is that yeah, a, something like that. Or trying to suck air out of a bottle at this point, because we've only talked about the ridge vent or the, the roof right. vents. So right now, you're trying to get air out. It's only going to pull it from the house if you don't have any soffit vents. And there you go. That's the teaser. There you go. Okay, so... We'll be back next week with that. In the meantime, click that subscribe button, click the bell, and that way you'll be notified next time we post our uh, next videos. And, of course, leave some notes below. And you can go to MightyHouse.net for more information because we've always got that website up and running. So there you go. Until, no, see there, I just screwed it up. I just, every time. Every freaking time. Why can't I get this? Keep it square and level. You wrote it. Until, Until next time. time. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's so funny. It's two uh, lines. I know. Yeah. It sucks. Why can't I do that? We need a banner in there. Is that what it is? Yeah, just put the banner up. <laughs>